<laughs> but talking of sort of aspirations, have you ever had aspirations of, of playing abroad, playing in England, playing in France? Um, to be honest, not uh, really as a youngster. Um, I was always, uh, I, I had a season ticket for the Dragons when I was younger. Uh, proud to be from Gwent and sort of playing for the Dragons. But um, I think people change over time as well. And um, it's probably something I'm not looking at at the moment. But um, if there's something I've probably learned over the last sort of three months or whatever is that rugby is not the absolute be all and end all. It shouldn't really control you as a person as well. Um, you don't want to, I don't want to just be LED the rugby player. I want to be LED the person as well. So yeah, um, it, yeah it be, might be nice sort of years, a couple of years down the line to go and experience new culture. I certainly enjoyed uh, being out in Japan. Not sure if I could sort of, I don't know if I'll have a family at that sort of time and about getting out there. But if the if the circumstances are right in, in years to come, then, then maybe that'd be something I'd, I'd look at. It'd certainly be nice to sort of wind down somewhere and um, go live in the sun for a few years. But at the moment, I'm probably looking to get some form back and, uh, and get back performing and building something with the Dragons. And what are the players' thoughts on the 60 cap rule? Because... You know, it's it's pretty crazy that rule, isn't it? I know, obviously, you represent the WRU, but you know, it stops players from having the chance of going abroad, doesn't it? Well, obviously, Reece Webb being the main uh, example. Yeah, obviously, uh, sixty caps is a is a lot of caps as well. Um, it takes a long time to get there, and you've got to if you do get the sixty caps, you've really sort of earned your earned your stripes and earned your right to to go away. Um, I think it comes down to the individual. Um, obviously, we talked about it. It's obviously every every young rugby player's dream to to play for their country, and um, you'd be foolish to, to throw that away at a young age. Um, but I think people look at, look at it differently in sort of parts of their life. Um, it's also very stressful as well playing international rugby. Um, sort of people on the outside don't really see. Um, the effects it has on you, um, you're always sort of switched on. You you haven't got time to to switch off and think about other things. So I think it's down to the individual. If if if, if you can keep going and um, you can cope with that, then um, you're obviously going to want to stay and 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 play for Wales. But for some boys, they might want to pick up a little bit more money. There's obviously more money in countries we've mentioned, and some boys might want to pick up a bit of an easier lifestyle and a, and a bit more money to um, secure their sales for they, they know they come to the end and to secure their sales for after I think it's always tough it's like a taboo thing that people don't like to talk about um, how much players earn and, and stuff like that but people on the outside they don't realise that you sort of you spend all your career as a youngster earning poor money shit money and you climb in the ladder you climb in the ladder you climb in the ladder and then you get to a point where you're, you're getting rewarded and you're earning real good money for five years if you're lucky, and then it just drops totally off again. So, it, um, it's something that I think should be talked about though, because you know, I you see Hadley Parks and he he got a lot of shit for going to Japan and oh yeah, he's, th he's throwing his Welsh career away. And I talked to Josh Matavesi the other week and he was saying, you know, he had another two years left in his Ospreys contract and the Bath offered him three times as much and he just couldn't like turn it down and people always think oh yeah he's throwing his Welsh career away but you're such a short time in rugby aren't you yeah it's um, to be honest you look at some of the comments on some articles and stuff and we, uh, and we do see them and you, you just laugh to yourself because you, you just you cannot understand what these these people are thinking with, with some of their comments I, if anyone was offered um, three or four times as much money in a in a in a country is a two-hour flight away or a drive over a bridge i'm sure it, that's enough to make anyone think well you'd be silly not to to even have a think of it have a look at it mm -hmm. um obviously we've like it's a massively proud thing everyone's got aspirations to play for to play for wales and i certainly have and um but it might come a time in in a few years time where i'm thinking well i've got x amount in the bank now it's not enough for me to be completely secure and happy. I need to do something about that to, 
make sure that, that I can live a lifestyle that, and it's, it's never like rugby money is never going to be life changing money. Mm. Um, it's not like football players. So you've got to sort of look after yourself because what do you play? You play 15 years if you're really, really lucky uh, of professional rugby. And that's not I a long time. As well. Yeah, if you if you look at a, a doctor earning similar sort of money, they're doing it for 40, 50 years. You look at a, a rugby player, they're not earning that much money for that amount of time to sort of secure yourself uh, forever. So, like, rugby players are looking for, obviously they're playing the game because they love it and that's, that's what they know, but they're also looking to give yourself a start in what's essentially a, after their first retirement, a, a new career and a new life because there's probably 40 years where you've got to still work and, and uh, look after a family and stuff. 